we are listening to audiences and asking them, what are the stories that you want in your homes and in your local theater, in your communities? We had the money, we weren't begging, and we could pay twice as much for advertising. No one would take an advertising dollar. We're open to the best creators in the world. Bring your stories to Angel. We'll show them to the guild and the audience gets to decide. And we go direct to the theaters. I don't need uh, I don't need approval from Paramount or somebody else. We're just going direct to the audiences uh, in theaters, also in our homes. Google wouldn't take us. We couldn't buy cable slots. We couldn't place advertising. They invented reasons no one had ever heard of for not allowing uh, us. We could get deep in the weeds here. You would do another show on this. Trust me when I tell you. We're under assault. All right, folks, I hope you had a great Monday. Uh, I am going to take you inside Hollywood, probably in a way that none of us have ever done. I, I am actually about to shock myself. I'm going to start with Carrie Solomon and Chuck Konzelman. Uh, they are both from Believe Entertainment. These are the guys who are putting out amazing content, and they're going to explain to us what it takes to bring it to you in a way that deconstructs Hollywood that I don't think any of us are aware of. Uh, and then we're going to bring in Jared Giese, who leads the distribution for Angel Studios. Those are the guys from Sound of Freedom, The Chosen, Cabrini, The Shift. We've talked about them a lot. They've got a great crowdfunded model. We're going to talk about that. Uh, before we do that, I want to tell you about two amazing sponsors that help us bring you this show free every time. And then we'll get into it with Carrie and Chuck. When crisis hits, when an emergency hits, will you be prepared? I know I will because I have a Patriot Power Generator 2000X in my house. And you can too if you go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer. Fourpatriots.com slash Spicer. When the power goes out, whether that's a day, a couple days, a few weeks, maybe even a month, think about all the challenges that we face to our power grid, natural disasters and emergencies. You want to be ready. And with the Patriot Power Generator 2000X, you can power your refrigerator, devices, computers, tablets, phones, you name it. All the things that are important to you, your family, that can be taken care of. And you can bring the Patriot Power Generator into your house. No fumes, no gas, no noise. It's perfect. It's portable, and it charges on solar panels that come free with it. You don't have to worry about reloading it, bringing out gas, getting it filled, the fumes, the noise, no. The Patriot Power Generator is fully portable. It can go into your house. You can put it in your car, drive it somewhere, helping out a family friend. And again, it's completely powered by solar panels that come with it. So go to fourpatriots.com slash Spicer so that you are ready in an emergency or crisis. If you're like me and looking to secure your financial future, then I want you to do me a favor. Call my friends at Bishop Gold, 844-984-1616, or go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean and have a conversation with them or check out the materials on the website, bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean, about how you can add precious metals to your investment strategy. Maybe you have an old 401k, an IRA, or you're just looking to diversify your investment strategy. I called them, I had a conversation about where I am in my financial planning, how we could add financial metals to my strategy, right? So I invested my money with them. You get hit up from a lot of groups all over. I see it every day when I watch TV or I'm online. I trust the people at Bishop Gold Group. They're full of integrity, knowledge about the industry, about investments and strategies. Call them and help them create a strategy that works for you based on the assets that you have. Again, maybe it's an old 401k or an IRA that you have sitting there that they can help you do it. You can talk to them about holding on to the metals. They can liquidate them for you. They can hold on to them for you. But call Bishop Gold Group 1-844-984-1616 or go to bishopgoldgroup.com slash Sean to begin your financial journey with precious metals and you get a free gift. Carrie, Chuck, good to see you all. I hope you had a great Easter. Always Wonderful. Good. Thank you. Good. Uh, let me ask you, you know, the funny thing about, well, it's not the funny thing. That's not the way to start this. The great thing about your movies is I, I'm always impressed by um, the, the, the talent that you get. And I, I, I wanted to ask you off the bat, like I'm thinking Sybil Shepard, um, some of these, are, like the big names, Lee Majors. Are these people, when, when they get involved in the movies, are they buying into the theme of the movie? Or are they just like looking for a job? Neither. Uh, actors want roles. And so uh, when an actor reads a script, they actually don't really pay much attention to the story. They read the role that you've written for them 
And it doesn't mean that they're not doing their job. It means they are doing their job. They're only paying attention to the to what what they're doing, and then they, if they can relate to that. You know, it's said that a prop guy, when you're making a film, reads a script like this: blah 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 ashtray, blah 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 wastebasket. And everybody who's reading a script tends to focus on what their part is. There are very few people that are actually looking at the overall story. Hopefully the directors do that. But sometimes it's for money. Sometimes it's because they are inspired. And sometimes it's because you know them. and You say, hey, throw me a favor. Yeah. So it's all kinds of, you know, it's a salad. Okay, but that, that's it's interesting to me. So then, is there backlash? I mean, like I said, I, I, I there were some big names that Amir uh, Servino, Lee Major, Civil Shepherd that I was kind of that I've seen in your movies, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, I was, but but I so I shouldn't read anything into that necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, th- that particular movie that they were in wasn't particularly controversial in terms of politics or theology, so that was an easier thing to recruit some folks for. Like when we did Unplanned. Ashley Bratcher, that was that was world changing. Ashley, Ashley Bratcher knew she was ending her career in Hollywood uh, when she did that. That, for those that aren't familiar, that was the story of uh, Abby Johnson. Abby was, Johnson. Yeah. So she was a Planned Parenthood clinic director. I, I thought the thing that was, I mean, just since you brought it up, that 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 movie to me was so fascinating because as the character gets called into a room at one point and is and is brought into the to the reality of what happens during an abortion that's that's the story the left doesn't want you to see man well that's the problem with the uh, the whole media overall right now it's a matter of not letting you see what you should see and so basically anytime we make a movie or a tv show nefarious unplanned god's not dead they immediately go on the assault to prevent people from seeing it so we got to do 10 times as much work just to even get seen Okay, so so walk me through that because I was going to ask you guys at the at the jump, like when you guys try to create a movie, um, it's like how hard is it to get a movie with with a a theme or uh, that that covers topics like this made and then produced and shown versus say if you wanted to do a Marvel film. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a perfect well, example. It's the difference between launching a, a moonshot as the United States. Or as a five-year-old in your backyard. Yeah, that's really what it was. Uh, uh, I mean, okay, we'll give you an example. God's not dead. We made it for nine hundred and thirty. It was made for nine hundred and thirty thousand. Made one hundred and fifty million. If wait, we- wait, 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 stop. Hold on. Just stop for a second, because <laughs> I didn't take math in college. Can you say that one more time? Nine hundred and thirty thousand made one hundred and fifty million. Right. Okay. It so just revolutionized Christian film. Okay, but then why are they? I, okay, I, I don't. I just want to stop and go down a quick rabbit hole if I can. If you walked into my office and said, "Sean, I got this business deal. I'm going to spend nine hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to make one hundred fifty million. I'd be like, I don't care what it is. Let's do that ten times. Like, how does that not impress Hollywood? Well, good. Let us know your address. We'll be there in about three hours. Yeah. Oh, I have to tell you one quick issue. I don't have nine hundred. <laughs> <laughs> not liquid. You know, I got to sell Trump Tower. <laughs> Well, I will say this, uh, investors are fickle, you know, that it's timing, it's a matter of combination of things, and and a lot of them are scared. And most of those profits were pulled out, they weren't poured back into production. And when you say impress Hollywood, ironically, Hollywood hated that, because the mission was so against, you know, part of what uh, conservatives overall, I think, who are not in the film industry, they suffer from one very strong misperception. They keep believing that Hollywood will recognize that there's a market opportunity for the types of films we want to see and that we're good and that they're going to go start making it. And that's, that's so wrong. Um, if I was to ask you, let's say, you know what, I could, I could have you make money making a movie, but it would violate every, every precept you have, everything you think of as moral and you lose every friend you have in the world. If you make it, you probably say, I don't want to invest in that. Well, people in yeah. Hollywood are the same. It's just a different set of what they like and what they hate. But getting back to the 900 turning into 150 million, had we been left wing, we would have been directing Batman, yeah. getting $200 million budget because the astronomical success. But literally, we did not get a phone call. Yeah. No one. Did you get any? 
So, but, but, okay, you didn't get a phone call, but does anyone in the industry at all, awards wise or anything else, recognize success in any way, shape, or form? No, they, as a matter of fact, they're haters. They tear us down everywhere they can. Now, the people that do notice are uh, believers and people that are conservative, and they say it was awesome, it was great. Our latest movie was Nefarious. We get people walking up to us and saying it was amazing. I remember that. I mean, social media was ablaze with it. Yep. But, you know, it's very, very difficult. But, you know, I, I will tell you, it's going to sound trite, but we walk with the Lord and he opens the doors and keeps us going. I mean, and he's well pleased. Uh, and we see miracles every day that are incomprehensible. So we've got what we believe is God. They've got money. Yep. Okay. So they, they have also the infrastructure, right? I mean, I don't know anything about your industry, so please. But like, I assume if I have a... a, a a, a blockbuster hit of something, right? I can go to an executive, they get Paramount or Lionsgate or somebody involved, whatever. Who do you guys go to? We have to do it on our own. Yeah. We have our own distribution company, literally because they would choke us out. And so we would not be able to get into the theater. So we had to go around them. And through a series of miracles, I'm telling you from above, we were given a distribution company. Now we can go around. So to get it on Amazon, we do that. You know, to get it in the theaters, we do that. It's what we do. Here's how the public. So, go ahead. Here's how the public thinks of movie studios. They think of movie studios, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Universal, as companies that make movies. That's like saying doctors are people who wear white lab coats. The observation is correct, but it doesn't get to the heart of the matter. What studios are is they are distribution companies. They, they bid on the right to distribute successful films and TV shows. Well, they also use that as the choke point to keep out anything they don't like agenda-wise. So ironically, it's actually easy for conservatives to see as the means of production, to actually go out and make a movie. The cameras, you can hire all the people, you can hire a whole bunch of people. But you can't get distribution. But distribution is the choke point. And that's the thumb on the neck of the conservative and the Christian filmmaker. So what does that mean when you, okay, so I make the film, I've got the cameras, I shoot it, I edit it, I've got a ready-made film, but now I want to get it into the AMCs of the world, right? The theaters that, of the world, yep, and on the TV channels and on the Netflix and on, and on uh, the DVD shelf at your Walmart, all those things. And Well, let me give you an example. So we on, on plan had like $15 million in marketing or whatever, and we're ready to roll, we're ready to go out, let the world know. We had the money. We weren't begging. And we could pay twice as much for advertising. No one would take an advertising dollar. Google, Not one. Google wouldn't. We couldn't buy it. So, so I just want you guys to know, rest assured, in the future, the Sean Spicer Show will take your money. Uh, and then I will say the name of the show. <laughs> uh, so just know, I, I, I want this to be clear. Well, right now, you, we, we, will come. Work. We'll we got a deal. We got a deal. Oh, and that's we, how we do it, by the way, for all the bull. That's how we do it. I, we go to a guy like you, and what we do is we say, look, this is what we've got. We've got the money to cover your time and, you know, for you to help us. Let's do it. And then you get fired up and you spread the word. And we go yeah. to the days and we go to Daily Wire and we and we go out viral is where we can. Look, we are in a battle here. I think we're in World War Three, and we don't realize that. I can honestly say this, this enemy we're up against, they hate us. Yes. You know, the American people do not understand what's going on. The enemy is within, not on the outside. It's on the inside. So it, last week I was railing on this Ronna McDaniel issue about NBC canceling her. And, and, and maybe it's not in completely analogous, but I think it is in the sense that they there's the outlet. They won't let us on to give our point of view. They won't allow you guys to get your thing distributed between big media and big Hollywood. That's the thing. They don't want you. And it's funny because I, you put your finger on a question I had for so long, which is I thought of a movie like Soul Surfer, Sound of Me, you know, Sound of Freedom, all these things, success, success, you guys with uh, Nefarious. And I'm thinking to myself, what, what's going on? How many, at some point, somebody's going to say, well, look at how much money. And it, it really isn't about the money. No, no it's, it's about not. propaganda. It's about political control. They look at the movie. Now, the movies used to be movies. However, now what happens is they don't care about whether the movie makes money. It's like spending, it's like a super PAC. They're just spending money to get a political message out. Right. right. Okay, they're, just, they're just throwing the money out there. And they're going to stay to it because they know one thing, unfortunately, that if four or five years go by, 
people will eventually break down and they will start to change their view. And that's the game they're playing. Yep. They're trying to convince Change their view how? What do you mean by that? Well, right now, every American who's got any common sense at all knows a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. Right? I mean, it's very yep. difficult. Okay, we all know what's going on. If they bombard us long enough, what will happen is you will start to see people shifting. Just, okay, you know what? Just let it be. You know, I just want... And that's where they win. For example, will and grace is the reason there is homos homosexual marriage in this country. Because you make a TV show, you make everybody fall in love with the characters, then they begin the political agenda, and slowly but surely, they get what they want. They know this is the most... Look, Stalin, Lenin, Mao, they all said the same thing. If I can control TV, if I can control the movie screens... I control the world. This is not a new Hitler idea. Said. This is not a new idea. It's 2,500 years since Plato wanted to ban drama from his idea of the perfect republic, the perfect society. And the reason he wanted to ban it is he said it's too powerful. It gets men to act on emotion rather than logical thought. And he said, that's just a dangerous thing. You don't want to play with that. Well, our, our opponents have known that for a very long time. So, so these companies, Sony, Paramount, whatever, are they, is it, is it th that, like, is a Bob Iger, the guy who is, is ultimately saying this, not that, or, or, or like, what level does this come in at? The executive ranks, the exec, I, I can't think of a conservative executive anywhere that we ever met in Hollywood. Well, I got to say, I got to say, I know this is going to sound crazy. I think it's bigger than that. I don't think we understand. I think we're going into a level that people can't comprehend. I think the heads of studios are nothing but pawns, and I think there's a greater establishment above them. The Soroses, the Schwabs, I mean, the world, everything we know is going on. There's a dark evil out there, and it's unbelievable, the control. I mean, you've seen, everybody has seen the news shows at 6 o'clock duplicated all across the country. How do you get thousands of TV stations to say the same thing? This is not because Bob Iger said, well, today we're going to talk about homosexual marriage. It's bigger than that. There's a cabal of people above that. And I, I, I personally think it's totally demonic. Sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all, all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. I mean, this is crazy. You can't do what's happening today in a normal world. This is just unbelievable. But we're fighting this fight. You know, we're alone. I mean, there's anybody who goes out and does what you do, what we do, we're basically alone. The only people that care about what you and what we are doing is the average American. But other than so, that, all the means of control is on their side. So I made a decision just over, a, actually a year ago this week, to split from a network and go out and do this independently and allow people to, to grow, the show. Uh, and we, we signed a deal with the first network where we can be ourselves. I own the show. Going the independent route, you see Tucker Carlson, you mentioned the guys of the Daily Wire who are, people are splitting and starting to go this route. Is that where the only hope for conservatives in Hollywood? No, I believe there's a vacuum that's been created. I think success will bring investors. If investors, if billionaires decide they want to take back the culture, they can slowly do that. We're seeing that on our end. But new conduits have to be created. The, right. What does that mean? Well, you can't go through Warner Brothers. You can't go through Paramount. You can't okay. go through Universal. So, so we set up a distribution company. We set up, we're setting up a streaming platform called Believe Plus that'll put out conservative stuff. In other words, TV shows, movies, reality, uh, that kind of thing. You have to build the new structure that needs, unfortunately, there needs to be a side by side economy. And I believe we'll win in the long run because we do have the population on our There's side. Such a vacuum out there. They're not, really is. everything they touch bombs. Look at every one of their movies bombs. They're losing right. money hand over fist. The idea Disney could lose 50% of its park revenue is incomprehensible. Okay. So how, if you, how hard is it? I get the bottleneck at the distribution level, but then let's say, can you get into an AMC? Can you get your movies maybe by going around them into the theaters or are they part of the problem too? No, the theaters, the exhibitors fortunately do not have an agenda, anything like, as a matter of fact, the, the exhibitors tend to lean a little bit conservative. Well, yeah. I, it, you know, it goes back and forth, but I, here's, here's the secret secret is that the theaters are under assault by the studio. So okay. what they are doing to save their, their theaters is they're opening up their doors to guys like us 
because we're willing to give them product and not pull it out after seven. We kept Nefarious in the theaters 12 weeks. They love us. They're making money <laughs> every night. They're selling popcorn every night. But everyone else is trying to extinguish the theaters because the bottom line is streaming is five times more lucrative. The so you mentioned streaming. What's what's you guys got a deal though with Pure Flix, right? They aren't they? They're like a, a the Christian Netflix. Is that right? They're the Christian Netflix. We are we're doing our own thing. We we've got something called Believe Plus that we're creating. It'll go live in a couple of months, uh, and we deal with whoever you know whoever we deal with Salem, The Blaze, Daily Wire, you know even Amazon has taken our stuff, you know? I mean, they, for example, I mean, they screw us right and left. I mean, we got one penny an hour, a penny an hour for unplanned. Wait, yeah. so, and and I mean, I'm being serious now. So in other words, if I watched that movie and it's two hours long, you guys would get two pennies. Two cents. Yeah. And if, by the way, if it's one hour and 59 minutes, we get a penny. Well, and what would a normal movie get? What would, um, you know, any be- other- well, okay, if it was a liberal movie, let's say it was anti, let's say it was pro abortion. A diamond hour. Plus. What they, no, they would have gotten a lot more than that because they would have gotten bought. So Amazon would have given them $35 million and run it for XYZ forever or whatever it is. The look, the left marches in sync. Their politics, their religion, their entertainment, it's all lined up. So basically, they take care of each other, they reward anyone who's in the club. And they punish right. anyone who's not in the club. I mean, out of all people, you know what we're talking about. On our side, we have we have trouble getting three conservatives to decide what time it is. Wow. When you see a guy like Mark Wahlberg that says he doesn't he wants to pray for Tom Hanks and he's moving out of Hollywood, is that a positive sign or is that a one off? I think it's a in the long run, I think it's a positive sign. But you know, you gotta be very careful with actors, which the wind blows to the right and the left. There are there are some actors who are really standing up. And I think Wahlberg might be one of them. But the bottom line is that once there's loss involved where there can be pain, the average person backs away from it. You know, look, we got pulver. The FBI knocked on our door at seven o'clock in the morning uh, on my birthday and gave us subpoenas because of they want, bogus. They wanted stuff. to make a case for money laundering. What? And simultaneous, yeah, simultaneously, we were under an 11-month treasury audit for the release of Unplanned. And we had which, lawsuits which, from... Which resulted in a $0 adjustment after 11 months. And the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, put us through 18 months of hell because IATSE, the industry trade union, claimed that when they called a strike with no strike vote and no grievances, that we had fired our entire crew, which is the worst sin you can commit in labor law, except we didn't do it. And I found we didn't do it. That see this I, that that is <laughs> that's a whole new level of nuts. The idea that they're weaponizing this. Oh yeah. yeah. Now no, you can no, add past that when Senator Ted Cruz did a, a, a Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on suppression of conservative thought. We were the only group. We were the only guys given extended time to testify, and we limited it to our marketing campaign on unplanned. When Google wouldn't take us, we couldn't buy cable slots. We couldn't place advertising. They invented reasons no one had ever heard of for not only uh, us. We could get deep in the weeds here. You would do another show on this. Trust me when I yeah. tell you. Uh, we're under assault. Everybody who's ra- who's fighting gets under assault. We just moved to Texas. Our whole operation moved to Texas from California because we realized that we were an endangered species in California. It was only a matter of time before so, the attorney general was going to come chasing us. Uh, yeah, well, g- good for you guys, because at least now you can rest a little easier at night, not knowing that <laughs> at least the Texas Rangers aren't going to show up at your house in the morning. All right, if you're an animal lover like I am, I want to tell you about the great work of Delta Rescue. And if you go to deltarescue.org, you can check it all out right there. There's great videos. They show you what they do. It's a no-kill sanctuary. Notice that I didn't say shelter. Animal lovers, you used to go to the shelter to rescue, right? Leo Grillo founded Delta Rescue as a no-kill sanctuary for life that dogs, cats, horses, and other animals can get the care that they need, the veterinary care, the nutrition care, as a place to run free, to enjoy the rest of their lives. But Delta Rescue only exists because of the contributions of people like you and me. $5, $25, $100, 1000 a couple thousand, whatever you can spare if you're an animal lover. But more importantly, Leo Grillo, when he founded it, wanted it to be an enduring mission, something that went on well into the future. And to do that, we're asking people to check out deltarescue.org and go to the estate planning kit. 
So if you can make a contribution, great, but also go to the estate planning kit and see if you can make Delta Rescue part of your estate to help make sure that that mission endures forever. Go to deltarescue.org, check out the great work that they do, make a contribution, and then download that estate planning kit to see if you can make it part of your estate. The thing that I've always wondered about Hollywood is that when I was out, a couple times that I've been out there, I did 12 weeks on Dance with the Stars, I was always amazed by the people that like kind of would come up to you and whisper, like the 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 folks at craft services and a lot of the support staff. Um, and they were, maybe it's just because they actually had to make a living um, as small business owners, they had, you know, they were doing makeup or, uh, as I said, like craft services, they were selling something. They were, they, they actually had to live in the real world. Um, as opposed to a lot of the executives, maybe do you, is that, is that just my interpretation or do you guys find that that's true? No, that's, no, that's very true. true. Crews are full of believers. Crews are full of closet conservatives. Crews are full of real people and good people. It's the executive ranks that stink. But you got to remember, you got to remember what happens is in, it used to be if you were in the closet, you were homosexual, right? In Hollywood, the only people in the closet are the Christians and the conservatives. Believers and conservatives. Because if we stepped out, you immediately got beheaded and you lose your job. And then they, they call up your next job and kill you there and your next job and kill you there. They, they, they are efficient in hate. They're the greatest black and, of all time. Just so out of curiosity, since we're on this subject, I watched Cheryl Hines, the actress, introduce her husband, Bobby Kennedy, the other day when he was pulling out his new VP. And I thought to myself, she's done. I mean, the Biden campaign on the left has gone after Bobby Kennedy. They feel like he's a threat. I, do you think Cheryl Hines will pay the consequence for, the, for supporting him? Yes. Of course. Yeah. No one. Now, it, now there's this, one modifier. This isn't politics for them. It's their religion. Right. You don't violate. And this is blasphemy when you go out. You commit sacrilege or blasphemy when you out and you offend the powers that be as, as far as a progressive liberal, liberal politics. There's one modifier in it. Sometimes you know one or two prominent people that are on the bad guy's side and they really, really like you. So they may make a phone call and say, pound her, but don't destroy her. You know, blow her off the TV right. or, or don't relegate her to Siberia. Let her, you know, let her move out of Beverly Hills and send her to Indiana. But, okay. you know, that's, that's, that's. But I wouldn't be surprised if she just lose, lost her agent in the next week. Oh, I, you know, the funny thing is I, I, and, and people around me know that this is, this is the funny part that you guys will get. When Ronna McDaniel was going through her thing with NBC, she was represented by CAA. And I started texting people when it started to blow up. And I said, CAA is going to dump her quick. They literally had no problem taking her 15% while she was shopping a deal. The second that NBC dropped her, they were like, bye. I mean, those guys, I, I called it to all my friends because I've watched that, you know, I've seen that movie before. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the way it works. I mean, when we were making Unplanned, we went up against Planned Parenthood. It actually has a woman in Hollywood whose whole job is to be their liaison and teach, and she did a lecture at CAA, and they invited all the clients and the agents how to make pro-abortion entertainment. So that's the kind of stuff at Sundance, the annual film festival, they sponsor a luncheon. So you know our, our opponents are very well organized, very well funded, God. and and they and they know how to do what they do. We're, we're, you know, we're the guerrilla, we're the guerrilla resistance. We're we're we're, uh, we're running the revolution on on rifles and millet. But I, I will say this: unlike any other revolution in history. There are more of us than there are of them. But they, what they do very, very well, what the left does very, very well, is they take 10% or 15% of the population, which is them, or 20%, and they make it seem like they've got 70%. Yes. Yep. And then the other 30%, including every single other conservative, run scared, saying there's more of them than there are of us, and they control everything. They're going to destroy me. In reality, if our side decided to step forward in unity, they would be wiped out. They own all the megaphones. Yeah. That's, 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 you're absolutely right. They're the loudest voices. And it's like something sometimes on Twitter, it's just, they're the loudest people. They definitely don't. And, and what they do, I believe, is they scare people into believing that they're, they're, they're sort of like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, right? They make you believe they're a lot bigger than they are when it's just a few loud, annoying, cringy voices in fact, it's just a handful of people who have a bigger platform. Um, so, guys, let me just ask you this before we go. Look, what's next? What do you guys got on the horizon? We uh, we basically are uh, developing, you know, building the distribution company. So other filmmakers and uh, people that make movies, both 
uh, secular, conservative, Christian, it doesn't matter, that they can get their product to market. We're building the streaming platform for the same reason. So we got both of those. And we're going in production on Nefarious, the TV show. Uh, we've got some other, uh, which is going to be awesome. Uh, we've got some other TV stuff. We're doing kids, kids cartoons now. We've got uh, a series called The Last Patriot. Like, this should, this should, this should make us some friends. Maybe we'll get a knock on the door about this. It's about <laughs> 20 minutes into the future when the federal government decides to come for the guns and a small Texas town says God. no. Yeah. All right. There you go. You might be safe in Texas for a while, but <laughs> they're coming for it. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, Chuck, thank you guys for being with us. I appreciate you sharing this. It's so insightful. And we appreciate you too. We appreciate what you do. Thank you for your service. You bet, guys. All right. That's an awesome conversation that we just had. But how do these things get distributed? Uh, What are the challenges they face and how can we overcome them? That's why we're bringing Jared Giese of Angel Studios to tell us a little bit more about that. Jared, welcome to the show. Um, We're just having this conversation about how hard it is to distribute movies. And I, at least from the outside looking in, I have been really impressed with what Angel has been able to do. I mean, Cabrini, I, I took a photo the other day, was at the AMC Theater, you know, quarter mile from my house. Um, the the Sound of Freedom was everywhere. It blew box office away. What do you guys, I mean, what, let's just take a step back. What is the the model for Angel? What have you guys done that's different and, and clearly successful? Yeah, I think the core difference is where we are listening to audiences and asking them, what are the stories that you want in your homes and in your local theater, in your communities? Um, and we do that through what we call the Angel Guild. Um, the Angel Guild is made up of right now about 260,000 people um, across, the, across the U.S. And, and they vote. We show them the movies before we release them. And we asked them uh, two questions. Number one is, does this story amplify light? And we define light as anything that is good, noble, true, just, authentic, and excellent. Those are the kinds of stories. That's Angel's mission. We want to bring those kinds of stories, not stories that are full of nihilism and darkness. We want to bring uh, goodness, truth, and beauty um, into the culture. And so that's the first thing. And then the second is, how would you feel if this movie uh, never came to theaters, um, or never came to the angel platform. And they can say very disappointed, somewhat disappointed or not disappointed. It's not that good. And we're looking for people who are, when these films come to them, to the guild to say, I am passionate about that movie. I want that movie to be in my local theater. So we start with the audience in mind rather than uh, us trying to dictate like, no, no executive at angel can choose which movies are going to come. So we don't, we think that what's broken about Hollywood is the gatekeeper model where you've got a few random dudes in LA that are deciding <laughs> what we're going to watch. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I mean, this is, I, I literally am going like questions keep popping in my head. So 260,000 people are part of the Angel Guild. How do you become a member of the Angel Guild? Uh, you can go to angel.com slash guild and you can join and you can be part. Of- when you say join, is it like, a Costco membership. I just it's sign exactly, up. And I- exactly. It's like a Costco <laughs> membership. Uh, you get early access to the movies. You get two free movie tickets to every movie that Angel brings to the theaters. Um, and so there's lots of benefits that are a part of that. But the main thing we're asking them to do is help us help us choose the stories that are going to be in the theater. So, so I mean, just just to be like, so 260,000 people vote. You guys have a concept for the next Sound of Freedom, the next Cabrini, the next Chosen, whatever. You put it out there, the guild votes no. I'm disappointed or I don't, I, I wouldn't be bummed if this doesn't make it in. Then it's, it's out. you You guys move on. No, the, you can't say, hey, please, we really like this. Or <laughs> I, mean, I know a film, guy. You, take the feedback. you get to share the feedback directly with the filmmaker. Yeah. And if the filmmaker takes those edits and makes the changes and wants to resubmit, they can do that. Um, and that's our whole per- our, our purpose. So like, just the- walk me through the model here. So then that means I, yeah. the filmmaker, make the movie, then you show it? Or is it that I send you like a, a an outline and I say, the movie's going to be about, um, you know, Mary and Joseph pre-Jesus or something. And I want <laughs> it, or, or do I actually have to put a film together? You have to shoot something. Um, we don't, we're not like a traditional studio. We're not doing the, all the development from the script in that phase. We are working, I mean, we do work with filmmakers from what we call a torch, which is, we call it a torch because it's inspired by the Statue of Liberty. That's our whole logo and everything is inspired by that. The Statue of Liberty was actually crowdfunded. Um, and the artist- No kidding. 
Are you? I, 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 that's embarrassing first, to not know that, isn't it? He, the artist built the torch and he used that to crowdfund the, the $14 million adjusted for inflation to build the rest of Lady, Lady Liberty. Um, and so, the, you know, it was real, wasn't the governments that built it. It was the, it was the people that said, we believe in this idea. Um, and so that's why we call this co proof of concept. We ask filmmakers to create at least a five minute video. It's a proof of concept that we call a torch to show the audience your skills as a storyteller and filmmaker and to give them a sense of the scope of what, you know, just like with the statue, you could see how big that little hand was. You could get the scope for what the rest of the statue would be. Um, and so th that's one way is to shoot a proof of concept at least five minutes long, doesn't have to be the final cast. We did that with our film, The Shift. They, the filmmaker shot a short film. A Is that the one with Neil McDonough? Film. Yes, Yeah. exactly. Uh, it started off as a short film seven years ago that the, the filmmaker like used pizza money and volunteers uh, and then ended up being a movie with Neil McDonough in theaters, you know, seven years later and Christopher Palaha in the lead and just a, a powerful different kind of film, a sci-fi and faith movie. You don't see those kind of innovative things. So it's a path for filmmakers to create innovative stories that uh, the traditional gatekeeper system in Hollywood would ignore. Um, we also allow fully finished films to come to us. Um, that's how Cabrini came to us. Uh, oh, really? Freedom, same thing. They were finished films that we showed to the guild. Um, and like with Sound of Freedom, because a thousand guild members voted on that, you know, over 30 million people saw it in theaters. So the funny thing is, Cabrini, I know we just celebrated Easter, but I will tell you, if you haven't seen Cabrini, on, on a multitude of levels, it's an amazing, compelling movie. I, I, um, and I, what I love about yeah. the movies that you guys put out is, you know, we often have to make a decision about what we're going to see as a family. We don't go to the movies that often, to be honest. Uh, but when we do, it's what's appropriate, what can everyone see? And the thing about Angel Studios, I mean, Sound of Freedom probably isn't the best for younger kids, not because there's anything inappropriate, right. it's just a level of content. But okay. Cabrini, yeah. uh, it's, it's a great, it's a female empowerment story. It's a religious story. It's a, I mean, like, on several levels, it's a great, great movie that you can take your entire family to. Absolutely, and uh, I've I've heard many people. I have boys, but uh, my friends who have who have girls, they all say that's girl dad approved. Uh, <laughs> I will and, I will add my name to that list. Girl dad approved, <laughs> and that's the kind of movie you want uh, daughters to see. I, we want everyone to. I think to, it's one of those things when you see. Uh, her tenacity to not give up for the mission that God called her to do. It inspires you that when you're having difficulties uh, in whatever it is that you're, you're pursuing in your life, that uh, don't give up. Just don't get stuck in the stay where you belong kind of thinking. So such a powerful film. So I was having this conversation just a minute ago, as I told you, about distribution. Yeah. And that seems to be one of the big hangups in Hollywood that these, the big studios, the paramounts of the world don't want the content like that you're producing. What have you guys done to, to do, to do that differently? I think it's really just providing an alternative. I mean, a lot of people will ask, uh, well, what do you, what does Hollywood think about what you're doing? And, and I'm, I'm sure they're aware, but we really, it's not, we just don't care because we've provided an alternative system. I mean, our, what we believe is that the, the, you know, the strikes and we believe the gatekeeper model is broken. I think the strikes in Hollywood showed that it wasn't working for the creatives either. Um, and we're open to the best creators in the world. Bring your stories to Angel. We'll show them to the guild and the audience gets to decide. And we go direct to the theaters. I don't need uh, I don't need approval from Paramount or somebody else. We're just going direct to the audiences. Uh, in theaters, also in our apps. We license our shows to all the different places with the Delta Airlines and, you know, you name it. We'll put our content everywhere people can see it. Um, but it's really about creating uh, an alternative distribution path for content um, that has an existing audience. You know, a lot of times Hollywood will go to opening weekend to find out, hey, let's see if we have an audience. Because the Guild's watching these things, we're allowing crowds to invest in the advertising campaigns. We go to opening weekend to celebrate these stories that our audiences are selecting. I got to think from a, from a dollars and cents standpoint, the model actually is not, I mean, you know, if there's interest, right? If the guild says yes, and X number of people voted, that's like a fo your own little focus group. They're like, okay, we know there's enough interest in this movie. And frankly, that's it's right. also like its own echo chamber, which is if I voted yes, now I want to go see the whole thing. 
I want to see how it came to fruition. It's actually, I mean, think about it. You're right. Hollywood puts a movie out there and everyone goes, oh, is it going to do well this weekend? And how's it going to do at the box office? You guys kind of have a tell already. Absolutely. And, and it's not only the voting, you know, each of these projects uh, will have opportunities for guild members and anyone who wants to invest in, in the campaigns, whether that's the production or often the marketing, what we call the PNA, the prints and advertising campaign that it takes to bring these films to theaters uh, and they're getting a return. And so um, we've had 100,000 of those guild members have invested over $80 million in projects distributed by Angel Studios. So just to be clear, it's not just that you're voting. You have a chance to invest. If you say, I, I like Cabrini or, the, or whatever is coming down the pike, I love this movie so much, I'm willing to invest in it? That's right. <laughs> and then what? You, you actually can make money, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, like I think Sound of Freedom, I think we the investors in the PNA received 120% return in like 60 days. Um, and so, you know, each of Where these else? projects. I mean, th think about that. Where else are you going to go? I mean, I, I looked, I was getting uh, the other day having a conversation about getting 5% return on a savings account. That was like his shifting some money. You guys are, uh, we've done a hundred and something percent in 60 days. I'm like, well, then let's go, let's go there. <laughs> I mean, film is, we, we're, we're basically wanting the our, our audience and all of us together to start caring about these stories and caring about the culture. And we're providing a path where we can all get involved, partner with the creatives that are telling stories that, that are going to bring goodness, truth, and beauty into our homes and into our theaters. Um, and basically making the audience the new Hollywood executive, if you will. Um, and saying you get to choose and you get to invest and let's win and enjoy these films together. Yeah. Uh, walk me through what like a full distribution looks like. Is it, hey, we're going to go to theater and then we're going to go to streaming and where, where financially what matters most? Like what, where, where, what is the new paradigm, if you will? Well, we still believe in, in the power of theatrical, um, you know, movies that go to streaming that were first on theaters do way better than if you just do a release straight to streaming. And so- Interesting. Uh, you know, Sound of Freedom, we worked with Amazon and licensed the, the film to them in a, in a window after the Angel Guild members got to watch it first. Um, so Angel Guild members always get at first access to Angel Studios films and TV shows. Um, but then, you know, we'll, we'll do all the normal things that, that, a, that a Hollywood studio just, we do worldwide distribution. We take things to other countries. We license to television networks and streaming platforms. Really each film, we want to find the best place for that film to reach as many people as possible. Um, and when we do that and you have that impact, of course, there'll be returns to those producers so they can make more of those kinds of stories. So what do you guys come, have coming down the pike that's been approved? Yeah, the next film uh, is a film called Sight. It's coming Memorial Day weekend to theaters. Um, and so that is a powerful, true story of Dr. Ming Wang. He is a Chinese American immigrant and the impact that he had uh, and has had with these life changing surgeries and, and, and new technologies that he's uh, brought. Uh, and it's a very moving story, it stars Greg Kinnear and, and Terry Chen. You are the doctor, they say, who can work miracles. Hello, Kajan. Street beggars make more money if they're legitimately blind. So the stepmother poured sulfuric acid in each of her eyes. Maybe 1% of vision remains. There's no chance to save it. She doesn't deserve to suffer anymore. Thought you said it was impossible. I have to succeed. I'm with you, Ming. There's some things in the past that I can't get over. Who says you have to get over them? And then we have a film called Possum Trot coming 4th of July, which is kind of a funny, funny name, but it's named after the town of uh, small town in East Texas and a, and a, and a church there that, um, took on the challenge of the foster care crisis and they emptied huh. out the foster care system in a 200 mile radius around their church. It's a true story. Um, and what got moved me so much when I met the producer is that they said, did you know, you know, you've, all this awareness that's come from Sound of Freedom around child trafficking, but did you know that 90% of the kids that get rescued out of child trafficking were, came out of the foster care system? And that really solving this foster care crisis is upstream 
uh, from the, the awareness of the issue that was happened in Sound of Freedom. And so uh, we're excited to bring all of the awareness that happened from Sound of Freedom this 4th of July to Possum Trot into just this uh, powerful story, true inspirational story of what a church did um, before these kids. Yeah, I'm excited to see them and then obviously get advance of them. I mean, just in advance of them, talk to you guys about them more. Um, last yeah. question, I mean, do you guys do anything in house or is it all through the guild? Um, well, the guild kind of is in house, if you will. I mean, that's. I mean, you guys don't develop your own movies. You, you so you got people. The model is people bring them to you. That's right. Now we work with with storytellers to create an ecosystem that allows these stories to come to the world. Okay. So I'm not writing scripts or anything like that. But we we do we collaborate and work with lots of creatives um, and to help them get to that standpoint. But it's a much more entrepreneurial focus. Right. It's not just a, a filmmaker for hire. Um, just pay me to make movies and then move on. We want filmmakers to care and be, be have a connection and a responsibility to their audience who are their literal investors. Um, and so okay. we, we built a model that just changes that dynamic from more of that traditional system. Awesome. Jared, I appreciate you being with us. Thanks for everything you're doing and uh, look forward to, to spending my Memorial Day and 4th of July now with, uh, with the next releases from Angel Studios. Thanks so much, Sean. You bet. All right, guys. What an amazing show. It took us inside Hollywood in a way that I've never known. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it as well. We've got a great rest of the week lined up for you as well. Um, please continue to subscribe. YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Spotify. Get them all. Get them all. We'll see you back here tomorrow on The Sean Spicer Show. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get more.